Leo Rotens is a smart guy, and he joins us today from Toronto from the NBA on TSN, and I, uh, I appreciate him joining us today. How you doing, Leo? I'm great. I'm great. How about you? You guys, it's, it's an honor to talk to you. There have been times that Rod Black's been on this show, as you know, and while well, he's sitting beside you and he's turned his uh, device and, you're, and you've waved at us and stuff. But to have you on for an actual interview, I appreciate it. How are things going for you in Toronto today? What's up? Actually, it's a gorgeous spring day, so we, we haven't had too many of them. So uh, I'm enjoying it. It's a beautiful day and just uh, just you know just relaxing. All star break, so uh, you know as you know, it's the schedule's been a little crazy. It's uh, literally every other day, if not every day, uh, and the second half is going to be just as crazy, if not worse. So just trying to take in all the relaxation I can before we get back going again. You have to decompress. You need some me time, some Leo time. There's no doubt about that. But I've got two <laughs> all-star questions for you, Leo. One, how do you feel on the backlash the league faced for not for holding an all-star game in the in the face of a pandemic? And two, the absence of Raptors in the all-star game. There's a two-pronged one for you. Well, let's start with the Raptor first. I mean, the reality is you win some more games, you get off to a better start, you probably have it, You have an all-star in there. Uh, and most likely Fred Van Vliet. Although, again, Kyle, Kyle's had a great start to this season. He's been playing well. So it really does come down to winning. And that's why I thought it was a little unfair that Boston had two players uh, in light of their record. So, uh, you know, that's, that's there's always going to be issues like that. There's always going to be people going to find a, find a way to argue about the picks. But uh, overall, you know, there's not much you can do about that. Um as far as the game goes, here's the reality of it. Everybody wants sports, right? Everybody's saying they want to see sports. People were upset when they couldn't get sports. Well, now they're upset when you get sports in light of what's going on. And here's the, here's the catch. If you want sports, you better let them kind of try to do it as best they can or you're not going to have sports because they're all going to go belly up. They got to find ways to make money. Uh, and the NBA is healthier than most. The NBA obviously has global licensing and they have revenues coming in, you know, throughout the, from, from everywhere in the world consistently. However, they're taking a big hit. Uh, hockey's taking a big hit. Everybody is. So, you know, you, 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 you know, the all-star game is, is all about money. And, you know, I give the NBA credit that, you know, they, they whatever they do, they do a great job of trying to make it as secure uh, and as safe as possible. Does that mean that nothing's going to ha happen? Does that mean that there's no risk at all? Absolutely not. But I think everybody knows the risk going in. Uh, and obviously, I don't think I have to say it, they feel that the risk is worth the reward in this situation. If I could stand up with an ovation, I think we all would, Leo. Thank you so much for that. And, and I, ad I admire the leagues that are just ignoring the noise and for the sake of not just making money, like you say, but playing for their players, for their staffs, for the sake of entertainment. Adam Silver has said that. For all those reasons, I'm, I'm glad that they have. From some of our viewers, from John in Winnipeg, I think the NBA did a great job with the All-Star game, made it fun. John says, Leo rocks. Love his broadcast of the Raptors <laughs> games. Great job, Leo. Monty in Saskatoon says, Leo is a great man for Toronto basketball. I would suggest he's a great man for Canadian basketball, global basketball. Thank you. Uh, well, for Very sure, Leo. Kind. And well, obviously, we feel like we know you. You've never laid your 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 eyes on us, but you're in my living room all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> make yourself at home. But how about you know the Raptors? There was all the talk about trades, right? And they got off to the slow start. And what should they do? And and everything. And I, I'm not a proponent of blowing up a locker room in any sport. I'm not. Mm. And then your compadre, uh, Jack, is like, say, why weren't you on the bandwagon? They're coming back. Do you think they can keep this role post-All-Star break, do you think, going? Yeah. I mean, hey, look, as well as they played a third uh, of the first half there, they can play a lot better. Um, you know, and, and the key is you got to be healthy. You got to have guys stay on the floor. Nobody, you know, they, you know, even with OG, for example, who was playing great basketball, all of a sudden, he goes down. They're still still sustaining that effort. So if they could stay healthy uh, and keep doing what they were doing, they, because the reality is, I mean, the core is there, right? You still have a championship core. The peripheral guys are the ones that have to figure it all out, and and normally. But you know, and again, this is where we're all facing these issues today. That from the bubble on, 
we saw a lot of guys for the Raptors really struggle, right? They just weren't themselves. And, you know, a lot of people were quick to throw stones and, and, and critique it. But the reality is everybody is going through something today. I mean, it's we're in a different time. We've never been in this situation. Leo, while we were uh, getting you back, we were talking about you and Chris Schultz being Southern Ontario kids and both 6'8". And both oh, Schultz, man. Huh. Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about the big man? Oh, I feel so bad. I mean, we were inducted into, into the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame uh, together. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've always loved Schultz. He just had this, the gentle giant, right? Just always had a, a big smile, uh, would do anything for anybody. And, uh, I mean, it, it was it was, it was was kind of wild because they, TSN put up this picture of him and it had, you know, 1960 to 2021. Well, my birthday's this month and I was born in 1960. So I'm looking at that and go, wow. Um, you know, you got to count your blessings, man. You got to enjoy every day because you talk about gone too soon. Schulte is gone too soon. There's absolutely no doubt and, uh, and well said. So, yeah, you're – careers paralleled each other in a, in a lot of ways actually just different sports yeah yeah and uh and the thing about Schultz was with the heart attack everybody wonders how does that happen but he's very serious about his physical fitness right he's a good friend of mine he was always yeah. in the gym like there's a lot of that that doesn't hey yeah i tell you what i work out every day right I, I take care of myself and and uh i remember something happened when i was around 40 early 40s uh i seriously thought i was gonna have a heart attack like i had pain in my back but on my left arm my chest it was like really bad they never figured out what it was right and nobody they, they did all kinds of tests everything was fine but i and i and i said to the doctor yeah, I, no, I can't get a heart attack i'm like 40 years old he goes oh yeah you can oh yeah so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, we can we can take care of ourselves, but, hey, you know, the body is a machine, and machines can, can fail. They can, you know, wires get crossed. So, uh, like I said, you gotta, you got to count each day and, you know, wake up with a smile, go to bed with a smile, and say, hey, you, you got through another one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And when you wake up in the morning and open your eyes, say, thank you, because you're not even guaranteed that, right? There's absolutely no 100%. doubt. 100%. You know, we could sit and talk about the Raptors and the NBA for forever, but the one thing that I want, and maybe we can do it again because we're kind of running out of, out, out of time here. Uh, maybe we can have you on here into the spring, but your son sure. has joined the Ottawa Blackjacks, and I watch every Raptors game. I'm not a basketball expert by any means, but I'm a fan, and I saw you talking about that with Matt Devlin, that your son's joined the Blackjacks. So tell me a little bit about his career and what uh, you expect that experience is going to bring in the CEBL. Well, you know, Andy uh, had a long playing career and uh, it just got to the point where he's just tired of traveling, tired of being away from, you know, his family and so forth. So, uh, you know, this opportunity came up to be uh, in management with, uh, with the Blackjacks and it's a great opportunity. I, I think Andy takes great pride in uh, basketball in this country, uh, being a part of it. And uh, it's an opportunity to kind of test the water, see if you like that kind of a thing, uh, being involved with the team in management. And, and you never know where things like that go. So, uh, you know, I think he's having fun with the experience. And, uh, you know, like I said, hopefully have some success with it and most of all, enjoy what he's doing. I think For that's sure. the biggest thing when, you know, biggest thing when you switch careers or in a career, you want to find something you love to do as much as what you did before. Exactly. And my point is we're really big CEBL fans here and the Rattlers happen, yeah. uh, Rattlers happen to be our team, but uh, we we're fans of the whole league. And I love how the NBA is supporting the CEBL and Jay Triano was on here from Charlotte talking about the CEBL. Joel Anthony has joined the Hamilton Honey Badgers front office. Hey, I, I've been saying it for years. Yeah. I've been saying it for years. A domestic pro league in our country outside of the NBA is huge. I, you know, I love the CBL. I also would like a, a, a league in a winner too. Uh, I, you know, a qual I mean, they, there is one, but it's not run like the CBL. I mean, they just do a great job. You, I think you need both. I think domestic leagues are really important for developing the game. I was just going to say, how big do you think this could get with the CBL? Like there's cities uh, beating down their door for expansion franchises. Like they're going into Montreal. They're going into Calgary. I think Winnipeg wants a team like wh where, how big do you think it could get? Cause the basketball is tremendous as you know. Yeah. I mean, and, and the concept is great because when you do it in, in the season that they do in the summertime, you get a lot of players that are playing all over the world. They're coming home, right? These are a lot of players that don't get a chance to play at home, play in front of, people they, they love and, and know and friends and so forth. So the concept is tremendous. 
uh, you know, and, and it's a really well-run league. They got good people. Uh, and again, I, in the, the other league that's been in existence in, in the other, t- uh, during the winter time, it, it wasn't a, well, it hasn't been a well-run league. So I think the way the CBL is doing everything they're doing, uh, it can continue to grow. And, and again, I, I think it's so important for, uh, you know, not everybody can be an NBA player, right? Not, but every kid that picks up a basketball can aspire to play play U sports, NCAA, uh, can play, you know, uh, play in the CBL. You can aspire to keep playing the game, keep, you know, keep staying with it. So, uh, and see your local heroes play, which I think is really important. So uh, I, I really do think it could be a, a great thing, and I think it's an important thing. Single ownership, Richard Petko. Trust me, we, we work close with the CEBL. It's working, what they're doing. We got 90 seconds. You know TV terms, so I'm going to throw one question at you that we don't have much time. From Craig in downtown Toronto, Craig Campbell at the Hockey Hall of Fame. When are we finally going to have the best basketball players play for this country? Too many seem to have a reason to miss international events. Boy, the next Olympics could be real cool if we had our best Canadians playing. What's your answer to that, Leo? The best Canadians want to play. Simple as that. If they don't play, there are physical reasons, health issues, uh, contract issues, which, hey, you can sit there and say, hey, play for your country. Okay, well, if I got a $100 million contract, I can't risk whatever. You can't criticize a player for that. Uh, you know, but trust me, uh, these players want to play for Canada. They take great pride in playing for Canada. I've been hearing this whole thing about guys not wanting to play for a long time. That's not true. They all love the opportunity. And if it, if it fits, man, it's got to fit with your life. If it fits, they'll do it. Awesome. Tremendous answer. And, uh, uh, I can see that. Leo, this has been great. Long overdue. I hope we can do it again. Big fans out here. Absolutely. And enjoy the rest of the break. I appreciate it. And, and uh, like I said, I'd love to come back on. Raptors analyst, Leo Routens and uh, hall of famer joining us from Toronto. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.